This conference will now be recorded. Hello everyone. Today we'll start with uses of ammonia because how we can <clears throat> make ammonia and what are the chemical properties of ammonia that we have already seen in last years. And after ammonia, the next important compound for nitrogen, which is nitric acid, that will be discussed. And then different allotropes of phosphorus and also, also oxo acid of phosphorus and related problems will be discussed. <clears throat> Explosive. So ammonia, it has versatile use. It can be used as explosive and mainly it is used in making nitro-based explosive. For example, trinitrotoluene, RDX, etc. Okay. So nitro, uh, this group is present. That is nitro-based explosives are used. Then in pharmaceutical industry also, it has application. It is used in manufacturing certain types of drugs such as sulfonamide, anti-malarial, and vitamins such as thiamine and nicotinamide. Then the third application is refrigeration. It can also be used for large-scale refrigeration plant, air conditioning units in building, etc. The fourth application is agricultural use. So production of ammonite is important because we have already seen how we can uh, make a nitro link starting from this compound. So that is why it is also the compound from which we can make fertilizers. So from agricultural point of view, it has importance. Consumer products, it is used in different types of cleaning products because it has effective cleaning property. Okay, so these are the five fields, uh, that is major fields where we can see the application of ammonia. Now here we have a question, reaction of ammonia with excess chlorine. In last class, when we have discussed chemical properties of ammonia, in that case, we have seen that two different conditions may be there. One is ammonia plus excess chlorine. Another condition is excess ammonia plus chlorine. So depending on uh, which reactant component you have taken in excess amount, depending on that, product will be different. So when it is ammonia and excess chlorine, the product is basically NCl3 and HCl. Okay, so according to this, correct option will be option four. But if we have taken excess ammonia, then product uh, main nitrogen product will be nitrogen gas and NH4Cl. In that case, option one will be the correct option. Now just have a look in this uh, slide, which we have discussed in last class. When excess chlorine is used, NCl3 is produced. And when excess ammonia is used, then nitrogen plus ammonium chloride, these two produced. Okay. So correct option is option four. Next important compound of nitrogen, which is nitric acid. First, we'll see how we can uh, make nitric acid. So this is the structure of nitric acid here we have NOH bond and there is double bond between nitrogen and oxygen and this bond is basically coordinate bond and both the electrons uh, both are donated by nitrogen that is there is positive charge and this type of bond uh, it can also be uh, represented like this uh, using this type of arrow for small scale preparation that means for laboratory preparation method what we do we take concentrated sulfuric acid and it is heated with either sodium nitrate or potassium nitrate mixture so when uh, these two are mixed what is produced nhso4 and hno3 is produced so here we have taken sodium nitrate nno3 and sulfuric acid, acid mixture then heat is provided and here vapors of HNO3 is produced. Now when this vapor, it will be uh, in contact with cold water because here water is supplied. This vapor will be liquefied and it will be converted to liquid HNO3. Okay, so in this way it can be produced. But for industrial method, that is large scale method, uh, the process that is used that is known as Oswald process. So in this case, what we do, catalytic oxidation of ammonia. That is the main process uh, done. 
Now, catalytic oxidation means obviously we have to use some catalyst. And see here, uh, ammonia it is reacted with oxygen, that is oxygen gas, in presence of platinum. So in first step there is formation of nitric oxide, and this nitric oxide in the second step now reacting with further uh, more oxygen gas, and it is producing nitrogen dioxide. Now, nitrogen dioxide, when it is treated with water, finally it will produce nitric acid. So, here we have the reactions 4NH3, that is ammonia plus oxygen. So, here it is written 1 8 volume. So, it is in terms of volume. Don't think that uh, this molar ratio and this volume ratio it may not be same. Okay. So, 1 is to 8 by volume. And Platinum, rhodium, this type of catalyst is used, 9 is to 1 ratio. Temperature 800 degree centigrade, pressure is high. First, there is formation of nitric oxide. Now, here you can see from the Delage value that uh, it is exothermic reaction because Delage value, there is a negative sign, minus 90 kilojoule. Okay. Next, we'll see. In the second step, this NO, it reacts with oxygen and oxygen is basically coming from air and it is producing NO2 and in the third step, this is 1, this is 2, this is 3. Finally, it is reacting with water and it is producing nitric acid. So, this is the industrial method or large scale method and it has a specific name for this process which is uh, also a process. Next, we will see what are the physical properties of uh, nitric acid. When it is pure nitric acid, it is actually colorless and there is a uh, fuming nature also. It is fuming fluid and there is impactful smell. But uh, mostly what happens, if, if we keep it for a long time, then there is some yellow color uh, appearance occurs because of the presence of dissolved oxides of nitrogen. So some amount of NO2 is also produced and because of this presence of this very little amount of NO2 which is uh, you can consider as impurity because of this impurity there is slight yellowish appearance but if it is fully pure condition then there is no color <clears throat> corrosive in nature anhydrous HNO3 bubbles at 83.6 degree centigrade so this is basically the boiling point where it is converted from liquid state to vapor state and it develops a white solid at this temperature. See, it is very low temperature, minus 41.7 degree centigrade. So as it is converted to solid from liquid state, that means it is melting point. And density is very high, just compared with water. Uh, for water, it is one gram per centimeter cube, but now it is 1.53. That means it is denser than water. Next, chemical properties. HNO3, it is acidic in nature. And when it ionizes in water, what will be the ionization? After ionization, water molecule will be converted to hydronium ion because this H will be, uh, that is, after dissociation, there will be formation of H plus, and this H plus will combine with water and it will form hydronium ion and nitrate ion. So, this is the ionization state. Now, as it is acidic in nature, it can react with oxide. And also it can react with hydroxide. First we will see when it reacts with basic oxide, then it forms nitrate, salt and water. For example, suppose you have taken zinc oxide, which is basic oxide, and it is reacting with nitric acid. Nitrate salt will be produced. That is, uh, here the metal is zinc. So obviously zinc nitrate will be produced and water. Similarly, if we have taken hydroxide, for example, magnesium hydroxide, then also we will get the corresponding nitrate salt, that is magnesium nitrate in this case, and water. So reaction with both uh, basic oxide as well as hydroxide, in both cases we are getting the metal nitrate salt and uh, the byproduct is water. Some more chemical reactions we will see. Reaction with uh, carbonate, 
that means carbonate CO3 2 minus this ion will be present and hydrogen carbonate is HCO3 minus. So carbonate, hydrogen carbonate both can react with nitric acid. Fine. And what we will be getting? We will be getting nitrate salt, water and CO2. Now for example, suppose we have taken sodium carbonate. This is carbonate salt, sodium carbonate and what we will be getting? Nitrate salt. Now, as the metal present is sodium, so obviously it will be sodium nitrate salt and water and carbon dioxide uh, that is that will be produced always. Similarly, instead of carbonate, if you have taken calcium hydrogen carbonate, then also you will get again the same uh, metal nitrate. Now, in this case, it is calcium nitrate and water and CO2 as usual that we have also obtained in the previous uh, case. That is when we have taken carbonate salt okay any doubt <clears throat> the action of HNO3 with zinc now why we have chosen this metal because if you change the condition there will be formation of different types of products okay so when it is dilute and concentrated acid depending on that uh, whether it is dilute or concentrated and also the temperature depending on all these conditions there will be formation of different types of products first condition here we have taken when it is warm and dilute that means we have provided some temperature and it is in dilute condition 4zn10 hno3 it is producing the nitrate salt nitrous oxide that is n2o oxidation state plus one and water Next condition is if it is cold and very dilute, now also we are getting the same metal nitrate, but instead of N2O, now it is ammonium nitrate. Fine. And formation of water. So only this product is different. Otherwise, metal nitrate and water is always there. And the third condition, hot and concentrated. Now also we are getting metal nitrate and water, but different oxide we are getting. Now it is nitrogen dilute. So remember, different condition, whether it is uh, warm, dilute, or concentrated, depending on that three different products we are getting. Reaction with another metal, which is copper. Now we are also depending on concentrated or dilute, uh, these two conditions, different products we will get. But remember, metal nitrate will always be produced. Whether you have taken concentrated or dilute, in irrespective of that, it, this uh, compound will always be produced. Water is also there. But when it is concentrated, you are getting nitrogen dioxide. When it is dilute, you are getting nitrogen uh, nitric oxide. That means plus two oxidation state. Okay. So these two specific metals, depending on condition. Uh, that is whether it is dilute or concentrated, we are getting different products. But there are some metals, for example, chromium, aluminium, they do not dissolve in concentrated HNO3. And the reason behind that, there is a formation of passive film of oxide on the surface. That means oxide of this metal, that if you consider aluminium, there will be formation of Al2O3 because HNO3, it has some oxidizing effect so some amount will be converted to this oxide and this oxide will be uh, that is a metal will be coated by this oxide so as a result further reaction will be prohibited but this is only for some metals not for all the metals okay so here we have seen how nitric acid is reacting with copper zinc and carbonate hydrogen carbonate salts is there any doubt should i repeat it once more <coughs> Reaction with non-metals, when it is concentrated HNO3, it can oxidize non-metals. Now, for different examples we have seen, first the non-metal that we have taken is iodine. Iodine is converted to HIO3. Iodine is having oxidation state zero. HNO3 is oxidizing agent. So now from zero oxidation state, here oxidation state will be changed and the oxidation state is plus five, okay? Now, how we will determine that what is the oxidation state? 
which is HiO3. That means it is H plus and IO3 minus. Now IO3 minus means for each oxygen it is minus two charge. So minus two into three, it will be total six negative charge. So positive charge must be plus five because you have one negative charge extra. So plus five minus six overall charge is minus one. So in this way you can understand what is the oxidation state change after reaction with HNO3. From zero to plus five means it has lost electron and lost electron means it is oxidized. Okay. And not just HIO3, HNO3, here it is having oxidation state plus five, but now it is converted to NO2 where oxidation state is plus four. So from plus five to plus four, that means it has gained electron. So HNO3, it is acting as oxidizing agent. It is oxidizing iodine to iodate, that is IO3 minus, and itself is reduced to nit nitrogen dioxide. Second non-metal that we have taken is carbon. Now carbon is oxidized to carbon dioxide, and HNO3, again, it is reduced to NO2. Third non-metal is S8 sulfur, and in presence of HNO3, now sulfur, it is converted to H2SO4. So from zero oxidation state, now the oxidation state here is plus six, okay? Because if you remove two H plus, overall charge of SO4 is SO4, two minus. That means for each oxygen, it is minus two, total negative charge minus two into four minus eight. Positive charge must be plus six. That is why two negative charge extra. And again, the fate of HNO3 is it is converted to NO2. And next equation, we have taken P4, that is phosphorus. And phosphorus from zero oxidation state, now it is converted to H3PO4. That means here oxidation is taking place. And just like the other three reactions here also, HNO3 is converted to nitrogen dioxide. Okay. So these are the four non-metals uh, we are seeing here uh, how they are reacting with HNO3. In each case, it is the non-metal is oxidized to some other state because HNO3 it is acting as oxidizing agent in all the four reactions. And in each reaction, it is converted to nitrogen dioxide. Okay. So is there any doubt? <clears throat> Another important compound uh, that uh, it is not better we say mixture which we make from HNO3 and that is known as aqua regia. Now why it is important because it has some specific application. It has very important uh, property which is the capacity to dissolve some noble metals like gold, palladium, platinum. These metals are very inert in nature. They do not take part in reaction very easily. So there is hardly any solvent in which it is soluble. But if you take aqua regia, then it has the capacity to dissolve all these uh, metals. And here the mixture uh, actually, that is aqua regia, it is actually mixture of three is to one molar mixture of two different acids. One is HCl, which is a three ratio, and HNO3, it is one. This HNO3, it is uh, oxidizing agent that we know. So it is excellent oxidizing agent. And what is the role of HCl? From HCl, you are getting chloride ion. Okay. So this chloride ion, it will form coordination complex with this metal ion. Okay. So as a result, it will remove the metal ion from the solution. Now we will see the equation, then it will be clear. So according to it looks like this. And suppose you have taken gold, and when we are saying aqua regia, it is basically a mixture of HCl and HNO. So there will be presence of Cl minus ion, H plus ion, nitrate ion, all these ions will be present. So see here we have H plus NO3 Cl minus. This gold from zero oxidation state, first it is converted to plus three oxidation state. Now, how you will be uh, understanding that why it is plus three because here overall charge is minus one AuCl4 minus one so the charge over gold it must be plus three because for each chlorine it is minus one charge so plus three 
minus 4 overall uh, extra 1 negative charge. So see here, zero oxidation state is converted to plus 3 oxidation state. And uh, it means oxidation is taking place. And which reagent is actually the oxidizing agent? It is HNO3, not HCl, because HNO3 has oxidizing property, not hydrochloric acid. So this is the role of HNO3 in aqua regia that it oxidizes the metal to some uh, oxidation state. And <clears throat> what chlorine is doing, if suppose chloride ion is not present, then in the medium gold will remain as gold 3 plus. But if there is presence of Cl minus, this type of uh, gold chloride uh, complex formation will be there. And as a result, it will be removed from the solution. So that is the purpose of addition of HCl. Similarly, if you have taken platinum, now it will be converted to PtCl6 2 minus. So PtCl6 2 minus, the oxidation state is plus 4 because total 6 chloride and outside the coordination sphere negative charge extra is 2 minus. That means total positive charge, it must be plus 4. Okay, so first platinum is converted from zero state to plus four state. That means it has lost electron, it is oxidized. After that, PT4 plus is coordinating with chloride ion, which is coming from ACL. And ultimately, we are getting this type of uh, PTCL6 2 minus complex. Okay, so this is the uh, equations from which you can understand how aqua regia is dissolving all these noble metals, that is gold, palladium, platinum, etc. Okay. So should I repeat it once more? Is there any doubt in the equations of aqua regia? uses of HNO3. The first use is it assumes a critical part in fabrication of different items. That means starting from HNO3, you can make several other compounds that are important. For example, you can make explosives like TNT, trinitrotoline, pancotton, nitroglycerin, ammonal, etc. Next is fertilizer. For example, ammonium nitrate, calcium nitrate, all these are fertilizer. And here you can see nitrate ion is present. Now this nitrate ion, it, you can get it from nitric acid. Okay. Then nitrate salt, for example, calcium nitrate, ammonium nitrate, silver nitrate. These are uh, some in, has some important applications as reagent and all these compounds you can make starting from HNO3. Next, dye, stains, drugs and so on. It can be made from coal tar items with the help of HNO3. And very important application, which is synthesis of sulfuric acid by late chamber process. That we'll see in group 16, how we can make H2SO4 with the help of HNO3. So in the preparation of H2SO4 also, there is application of nitric acid. And some other applications, it is utilized as a part of cleaning metals like silver, platinum, gold, and so forth, because we have just seen that uh, it can be used for the formation of aqua regia. And sometimes aqua regia is also used to clean some other uh, glass substances in the laboratory. Fine. Nitric acid is utilized as a part of scratching designs on uh, copper, bronze product, brass, etc. It is used, utilized to make aqua regia for disintegration of noble metals because noble metals, they are so inert in nature, you cannot dissolve them with the help of other acid or other solvents, but you can do it in aqua regia. It is used as oxidizer in rocket fuel. So these are the applications of nitric acid. Now we have a question here. Aqua regia is used for dissolving noble metals. That, that is fine, that we have seen already. But the question is, which gas is evolved in this process? Four options are there, nitric oxide, nitrogen pentoxide, N2O3, dinitrogen trioxide, and simply the nitrogen gas. 
Now, just have a look in the previous slide. Here you can see in both these equations, there is formation of nitric oxide. That means correct option will be formation of nitric oxide gas. So which option will be correct? It is option one. Okay. So see uh, the equations that we have seen in aqua regia. It is not just that uh, we have to remember what is the actual product that is produced, which is obviously the metal complex with chloride. Air. But here the question is based on what are the side products that is produced in this reaction. So do not uh, ignore the other side products that is produced in this equation. Okay. Next group 15 element, phosphorus. Now, allotropy uh, is observed for all the elements in this particular group, but important allotropes we find in case of phosphorus. So that is why for phosphorus, we will discuss allotropic forms in detail. So there are three allotropes present, white, red, and black. Three important allotropes. The first is, that we'll discuss is white phosphorus. Now white phosphorus, as you can see, it is tetraatomic in nature, four P atoms. So you can call it as P4. And it looks like this. It has tetrahedral structure that is clear from this uh, picture. It shows chemiluminescent. So chemiluminescent, you can see it is basically uh, chemical energy that is converted to, to some light energy, okay? So here, some light uh, we can see, but without application of any heat. So that is uh, its important feature. And this type of phenomena is known as chemiluminescence. So as it is showing chemiluminescence, so that is why it is known as, it is chemiluminescent. Poisonous in nature, soft waxy liquid, it is so soft that you can cut it with knife, just like metals. It is most reactive form of phosphorus than the other solid phases. That is compared to the red and black form, it is most reactive. But remember, under normal condition. Now, why it is so reactive? Because from the structure, it is clear there is angular strain of 60 degrees. So that is the reason there is, uh, it, it is very reactive in nature. It undergoes disproportionation reaction in presence of alkali. So P4 from zero state, it is converted to plus three. That means in pH3, it is converted to plus three oxidation state. And in NaH2PO2, it has oxidation state plus one. Now, how we will understand it? It is just the same method that we have used. Just remove Na. Then what ion you will be getting? You will be getting H2PO2 minus. Okay. Now, two oxygen atom, for each oxygen it is minus two. So minus two into two, total positive charge plus four. So there must be oxidation state plus one present over phosphorus. Then on the total positive charge will be plus three. Two hydrogen, two plus one phosphorus plus one, that means plus three. Total positive charge plus three, total negative charge minus four, that is why minus one charge is extra, which is balanced by sodium plus. So see here, oxidation state, it is changed from, sorry, it will be minus three. So disproportionation uh, reaction means what? Disproportionation reaction means in the same reaction, same element will be simultaneously oxidized as well as reduced. So when it has gained electron, it will be converted to minus three oxidation state. And when it is uh, losing electron, then it will be oxidized to plus one state. So from zero to minus three, it is reduction because it is gain of electron. And from zero to plus one, it is loss of electron, so it is reduction. So this process is reduction. Now remember, this reaction is very important. And based on this equation, there are several questions uh, there in the exam. Okay. 
readily catches fire in air because in air there is presence of oxygen so reaction with oxygen it produces p4o10 which is basically the dimer of p2o5 p4o10 just multiply with 2 it will be p2o10 now as we have seen here it is uh, showing chemical luminescence so it is the emission of light because of some chemical reaction it is not emission of light uh, because of that you have provided some temperature it is not for temperature it is because of some chemical reaction okay so white phosphorus slowly oxidizes at room temperature so it is so reactive because you have seen here it is the most reactive form among these three allotropes so as it is most reactive you just simply keep it under normal condition at room temperature that is 25 degrees centigrade they, it will be slowly reactive with oxygen so it will be oxidized and there will be emission of faint greenish glow now this uh, why you are seeing this type of glow it is because of the formation of some excited reactive intermediate now these are reactive uh, intermediate uh, you cannot isolate it because they are very reactive so these are some uh, structure given PO hold to HPO2 like this. So these compounds are basically responsible for this uh, formation of light. Okay, so this is the chemiluminescence. So if it is asked what is the reason behind this uh, glow, answer will be it is the oxidation of phosphorus. It is producing some reactive oxidized intermediate. And these compounds are basically responsible for this chemiluminescence. This phenomenon. Fine. Is there any doubt in this slide? Next allotropic form red uh, phosphorus. Now, red phosphorus, look at this structure. It is basically uh, there is a 2P4 unit joined together and it is continuing both sides. It is just a portion of the molecule. Fine. But this red phosphorus, how you can get it? You can get it by heating white phosphorus at a temperature 573 Kelvin. But remember, it must be inert atmosphere and it requires several days. That means it is its synthesis is not very easy. Okay. Then it is having polymeric nature, which is clear from this picture, consisting of chains of P4, tetrahedra linked together. So this is one P4, then another P4, then both left hand side right hand side there will be another p4 like this okay so it is polymeric in nature odorless non-poisonous so this is important difference with white phosphorus because white phosphorus is poisonous but this is non-poisonous and it is insoluble in water and also insoluble in carbon disulfide chemically red phosphorus is much less reactive than white because we have already seen white is the most reactive and there is no glow formation in the tank. That means chemiluminescence property is not observed here. It is specific for white phosphorus, not for red phosphorus. Fine. The third form is black phosphorus. Now black phosphorus, it is having two different types of structure. One is known as beta black. Another one is known as alpha black. Beta black you can get when you are heating white phosphorus at 473 Kelvin and when you are heating red phosphorus at 803 Kelvin then you will be getting the alpha form okay now see there is some difference between these two structures which is clear from this uh, picture beta black it is consisting of corrugated sheet now the meaning of corrugated is if you look at this structure carefully you will see there is some wavy type of layer formation so this type of uh, uh that is wavy type of sheet it, that is known as corrugated sheet just you can take the example of asbestos which is used as roof similar type of structure so corrugated sheet uh, like structure and it forms a flaky layered crystal but if it is alpha then it is having monoclinic or rhombohedral type of crystal and it is opaque in nature another important difference it can conduct electricity but alpha form cannot conduct electricity okay so black phosphorus having two different forms 
beta black, alpha black. And alpha black you can make from red one at 803 Kelvin, beta black you can make from white phosphorus at 473 Kelvin. After allotropic forms of phosphorus, next we will see the important compound of phosphorus, which is phosphate, that is PH3. Now, if you look at this structure, it is clear that uh, it is having tetrahedral geometry and three coordination side, there are presence of three hydrogen atom and this is lone pair. Now, it is just like ammonia. Remember the structure of ammonia? because it is hydride of phosphorus. So it is, these two are analogous, but the difference is here the angle is around 107 degree and here the angle is uh, lesser than that. And what is the reason behind that? That we have already discussed. It is 93.5 degree. But if you consider the standard uh, angle of tetrahedral geometry, it is 109 degree, but here it is lesser than that. And the reason is, it is because of this lone pair bond pair repulsion. So there is electron density here, non-bonding electron and electron involved in bonding. So there will be repulsion and as a result, this angle will be reduced. How we can make it? Starting from calcium phosphide with water or dilute acid. So phosphide is P3 minus, P3 negative charge. Okay, look at the formula Ca3P2. We know calcium has oxidation state plus two. So plus two into three calcium, that means total positive charge is plus six. So total negative charge must be minus six because the molecule is overall neutral. There are two phosphorus atoms. That means each phosphorus atom is carrying minus three charge. So it means phosphide ion is present. Just remember it is same as nitride ion, which is N3 minus. CA3P2, when it is reacting with water, we are getting this phosphine molecule and other product is calcium hydroxide. But instead of water, if you have taken hydrochloric acid, now the product that is phosphine obviously will be produced again because we are making phosphine. That is the process we are doing. And byproduct will be calcium chloride. Second method that you can also do is starting from aluminium phosphate. Now see the formula is different, it is ALP because aluminium is having plus three charge, which is balanced by phosphorus uh, three negative charge. So plus three minus three. The formula here is not like Ca3P2 because in case of Ca it is plus two oxidation state. In case of aluminium it is plus three oxidation state. Reaction with H2SO4, it is forming phosphine and byproduct is aluminium sulfate. Third method, starting from phosphorus acid. Now phosphorus acid is HTPO3 and when it is heated, it is forming phosphoric acid. That is, it is forming another acid, oxo acid and phosphine. Laboratory preparation. Remember, this disproportionation reaction we have already seen and laboratory preparation method is also the same reaction where we are using white phosphorus and alkali to make phosphine. Now this phosphine that is produced in this reaction, it can be further purified if you are reacting it with hydroiodic acid. So pH3 plus hydroiodic acid, it will form pH4 I. pH3 acid, it will take this proton, it will be converted to pH4 plus ion. And that pH4 plus ion, it will be balanced by I minus. So pH4 plus is just analog of NH4 plus. Remember, NH4 plus, we call it ammonium ion. Okay. And here it is phosphonium ion. So first there is formation of pH4 I. Now this pH4 I reacts with KOH or NOH and it produces pure form of phosphine. Okay. And here NAI water that is also produced. Physical properties, colorless poisonous gas, and there is a specific smell which is like rotten fish. Solubility, it is soluble in CS2, better soluble in CS2, 
compared to water. In water, it is slightly soluble. Condenses to colorless liquid because under normal condition it is gaseous. So when the temperature is low, around 188 Kelvin, there will be condensation. So it will be converted to liquid. And if the temperature is further lower, that is 139.5 Kelvin, now it will be converted to solid. That means it is a melting point. This is a boiling point. So any doubt in the preparation and physical properties of phosphine? <clears throat> now we will see chemical properties. It is weakly basic. Just compare with ammonia. Ammonia, pH3, that is when we are moving down the group, the basicity of the hydride decreases that we have already seen when we have uh, discussed the hydrates of group 15 electrons. Now, ammonia is very good with, but pH3 comparatively, it is weaker in nature. It is weakly basic, it gives phosphonium compounds. Phosphonium means pH4 plus, just like LH4 plus. So see, pH3 reacting with acid HBr, it is taking this H plus converted to pH4 plus, and the counter ion is Br minus. The solution of phosphine is not stable and there is a tendency to decompose in presence of light especially and what it is giving it is producing red phosphorus and water. Then thermal, sorry it is hydrogen gas not water. Thermal stability. Now if we heat it then what will happen? The previous decomposition that we have seen, it is in presence of light, but in presence of heat also, 317 Kelvin. In absence of air, when you are heating, then it is producing again the same type of pump. And instead of heating, you can do another thing, which is uh, providing the electric current. Okay, that is also another way of providing energy. Phosphine precipitates some metal phosphide, it is D, okay, from their salt solution. So suppose you have taken metal nitrate, that is silver nitrate, and you are treating it with pH3. Now, AgNO3, it is converted to Ag3P. Here it is plus one, this is also plus one. Three Ag plus, that means total positive charge three plus. So here it is phosphide and that means three negative charge. So the formula is ag 3 p and it has typical black PPT, side product HNO3. Next salt you have taken copper sulfate and copper sulfate again see just like silver is converted to AG3P, now copper is also converted to CO3P and AGCL2 that is mercury chloride that is also converted to the corresponding phosphate that is uh, AG3P2. Now here the oxidation state is plus two, that is why the formula is different. Now the formula is Ag3P2, not like Ag3P, because in Ag oxidation state is plus two. Combustion. Combustion means reaction with oxygen. So when it is heated with air or oxygen, it burns and what it gives? It gives metaphosphoric acid. 4pH3. 8H2 in presence of heat, it is producing phosphorus pentoxide first. After that, this phosphorus pentoxide hydrolysis with water, ultimately it is producing HPO3, which has named metaphosphoric acid. Basically, there are different types of uh, oxo acid of phosphorus, which, which will be discussed separately. So here you have already seen some acids like HPO3, then H3PO4. Here you are seeing metaphosphoric acid, HPO3. So these are the uh, different for uh, oxo acids of phosphorus. Okay. Reaction with halogen, it forms pentahalides. So this is actually important method for production of PCL5. So there are the two important chloride of phosphorus. One is PCL5, phosphorus pentachloride. Another one is phosphorus PCL3, that is phosphorus trichloride. 
So these two chloride will also be discussed separately because they are important halide of phosphorus. So any doubt here we have seen different reactions of phosphine, reaction with metal, then uh, the products which will be produced when it is decomposed, then combustion reaction and also uh, thermal stability. So is there any doubt? application of phosphorus phosphine is used for producing smoke screen because it can give large amount of smoke now smoke screen it is basically uh, used to uh, for hiding purpose especially in case of troops okay so it is uh, this is the first application and the second application is very important which is production of home signal so what is home signal, which is basically used uh, when there is some important information has to be uh, start, okay? So suppose in a ship, uh, what, you, what, that is how the process works, there is a pierced container. And in this pierced container, there is mixture of calcium carbide. Calcium carbide is CAC2 and calcium phosphide, that is CA3P2. So this is the mixture which is taken in the container. Now, this mixture in presence of water, it liberates phosphine, that is PH3, and acetylene, that is C2H2. Now, it is thrown into sea. Because in sea, it will be in contact with water and there will be formation of phosphine and C2H2. Now, this phosphine catches fire because you have already seen how it reacts with oxygen. And this fire will be ignited, the igniting this acetylene gas because it is uh, highly flammable. These burning gases that uh, the fire that will be produced, that will be used as a signal for this uh, approaching ship. And this is known as home signal. So this is actually if the ship is some danger, then the information is uh, state by using this method okay so ca3 uh, p2 first it reacts with water and there is uh, formation of calcium hydroxide and phosphine similarly cac2 it reacts with water and there is formation of acetylene that is c2h2 and also calcium hydroxide but this acetylene and phosphine these two are actually uh, producing this smoke. First, PhD in contact of oxygen, it is producing, it is igniting, and this, uh, that is acetylene, will catch fire. So ultimately, there will be fire which will be used as signal. Now we have a question here. The reaction of white phosphorus boiling with alkali, you can take any which, for example, in inert atmosphere without oxygen resulted in the formation of A. Now, reaction of one mole of this compound, which is A, with excess of silver nitrate in aqueous medium, that is in presence of water, dash moles of Ag. Now see, it is written mole in bracket S, and it is an integer type of question. So if it is one, then it will be mole, if it is more than one, two moles, three moles, four moles, five moles, then it is plural number, okay? So you have to round up, round up to nearest integer because it is the integer type of question. Now we have already seen how P4 is reacting with NH. Remember, this proportionation reaction of white phosphorus in presence of alkali. So what it produces? When P4 reacts with NH, it produces basically two compounds. Now, how we will understand which compound is actually A? Now, this is also possible. First, see, P4, that is white phosphorus, it is reacting with HO minus, which is basically coming from NH. It is producing these two compounds. Now, this H2PO2 minus, it is actually, if you have taken sodium uh, hydroxide, it will be NaH2PO2. 
if you have taken koh it will be kh to be okay now how you will understand that this is a but ph3 is not a because both are the products of reaction between p4 and noh right now see it is mentioned that with excess of silver nitrate that is a plus excess of silver nitrate it is excess you are getting silver that means a must have some reducing property because silver from plus 1 state now it is converted to zero state now ph3 if it is a ph3 how reacts with agno3 remember we have already seen it in previous slide ph3 when reacts with agno3 basically producing ag3p it is not acting as reducing agent and it is not producing metallic silver so ph3 cannot be the molecule a that is clear right so if it is not a <coughs> obviously h2po2 minus that will be a now h2po2 minus when it is it is here acting as reducing agent and it is itself converted to h3po4 here oxidation state is plus 1 here oxidation state is plus 5 now here the overall equation is written but how we will Uh, write this equation you don't have to memorize it there is simple way to do it so first thing is here h2po2 is acting as reducing agent because it is reducing silver plus 1 to silver so if it is reducing agent phosphorus its oxidation state is changing from plus 1 to plus 5 that means phosphorus itself is oxidized right now here we have three hydrogen uh, and uh, two oxygen here it is four oxygen so if we balance the oxygen atom you have to add water here so it is as if uh, the same process that we do when we balance redox half reactions okay so when we have added oxygen uh, h2 so that oxygen number both side now it is four but see total number of hydrogen four here two that means six but here it is three that means three more hydrogen we have to add and that is in the form of h plus now what is the total charge both side left hand side there is a minus one charge right hand side there is three positive charge now if you are balancing this charge what you have to do you have to add four electron then only both side there will be minus one charge so up to this point is there any doubt how uh, why i have added four electron just to balance the charge both side charge should be same both side now both side there is minus one charge up to this point is it clear so this is equation 1 and another half equation is ag plus is converted to ag so it is already balanced but if you balance charge it will be addition of one electron equation number 2 in first equation there is four electron in second equation there is one electron so you have to multiply it with four now both equation four electron that means if you add this two equation one and two basically you will get this reaction so this is formation of 4ag and uh, how you are getting this by adding this two equation so basically we are getting four moles of silver so you can get this overall equation by balancing this half reaction so first balance the half reaction then add these two reaction so the first reaction is oxidation reaction second reaction is reduction reaction so this is basically redox reaction okay so here answer will be four that is four moles of silver uh, metallic silver is formed So is there any doubt should i repeat the discussion of this answer once more is it fine phosphorus trichloride 
preparation but before preparation look at this uh, it looks like this it is the appearance and uh, here it has tetrahedral geometry where one coordination side there is lone pair and the angle is not standard 109 degree it is lesser than that and that is because of lpbp repulsion now how you can make it when a slow stream of chlorine gas is passed over white phosphorus then you can get this molecule p4 6cl2 4pcl3 you can also get it by treating white phosphorus with thionyl chloride that is socl2 so socl2 it is also acting as chlorinating agent p4 is converted to pcl3 these are the other products now physical properties it is has pungent odor and irritating also now it is colorless liquid that is clear but it, remember it is fuming fuming and it is oily also soluble in water chemical properties when you are hydrolyzing it that means reaction with water there is formation of but remember it is cold water formation of phosphorus acid h3po3 which is one of the oxo acid of phosphorus and similar type of reaction you can also get with alcohol and uh, carboxylic acid so this reaction basically uh, probably you have seen in organic chemistry when you are trying to make uh, alkyl chloride starting from the alcohol so c2h5 this is the alkyl group it is as if roh where r is ethyl it may be any other alkyl group also and you are getting rcl so from roh you are getting rcl and the at the chlorinating agent is pcl3 similarly when you have taken rco2h carboxylic acid then rco2h is converted to rcocl that is acid chloride in both cases these are the side products that is the fate of pcl3 so sometimes these side products also important to remember because it may be asked that when alcohol reacts with pcl3 what is the fate of pcl3 so your answer will be the fate of pcl3 is it is converted to h3po3 okay so is there any doubt regarding all the slides in the whole class So if there is no doubt, we are ending the session here. Thank you for listening.